أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the steady path and surat al-mustaqim the guide to the straight path We don't want to be astray We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the innovation and stay away from innovation insha'Allah ta'ala So that said, today will be halaqa uh, session 25 MashaAllah, 25 session for the biography of Rasulullah sallallahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or what we call uh, the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but today we have a special session about the teacher our teacher is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so I really want to share this if it's gonna work I'm gonna try it I'm gonna share a song of uh, Hamza you uh, Sami Yusuf right uh, the uh, teacher I know you all know the song, you heard it before, so let's see if I can share this with you right here. So I'm gonna go to, I save the link here, <laughs> Hamza Yusuf. If it's working, let me know. Thumbs up or something, so it's loading. Inshallah, we work. Oh. And that can you hear that? Anyone give me some up? We once had a teacher, a teacher of teachers. He changed the world for the better and made us better creatures. Oh Allah, we've shamed ourselves. We've strayed from an island. Surely we've wronged ourselves. What will we say from Tobele? He was Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad, mercy upon mankind. Teacher of all mankind, Abu Al-Qusim, the Habibi, ya Muhammad, the Shafi'i, ya Muhammad, Khayru Khalqi Allahi Muhammad, ya Mustafa, ya Imam Al-Mursalina, ya Mustafa, ya Shafi'i Al-Alamina, ya Mustafa, he prayed while others slept, while others ate, it was While they would laugh, he wept until he breathed his love. His only wish was for us to be among the ones to prosper. Ya Mu'allim, peace be upon you, truly you are a teacher. Mu'allim, 
he was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, mercy upon mankind, each your own mankind. Oh, 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 He taught us to be just and kind, and to feed the poor and hungry, help the waker and the orphan child, and to not be cruel and miserly. His speech was soft and gentle, like a mother stroking her child. His mercy and compassion were most radiant when he smiled. Oh, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, mercy upon mankind. He was Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. all right that's our teacher i heard you i hope you heard that nobody raised thumb okay hello anyone did you hear i'm sorry i'm doing the dishes otherwise i would have given you a thumbs up but we yeah i heard earlier. it yes i heard it yes Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I will make, because it's the first experience to share uh, a YouTube. Alhamdulillah, then you heard that. So the topic is Muhammad. Actually, Sami Yusuf's first song, his first album was this song. Uh, that's how he started to be an artist. And do you know, uh, when he made the song, it, it was because of 9-11. Make me cry when I read the history about this song. He did it right after 9-11 when, uh, you know, Islam was hijacked. So he just came with this art to show the love and the uh, attribute of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through song. Um, so uh, if you if you know how many songs made for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the history, through the thousand four hundred forty five years, no human being got songs, and uh, the Turk call it ilahiyat you know, the love of Allah and connected with the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the world. No human being made song, contributed song for him as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had with all the language in the world. And here we have uh, Sami Yusuf became very big and, you know, uh, doing this in many, many languages. You know, he has so much album in Arabic, Urdu, English, uh, sometimes German, sometimes another language, mashallah. But I, you know, chose this song because the topic today it's about Al Muallim. Al Muallim is the teacher. Al Muallim in Arabic and Al Mudarris, I just find out there is a two different meaning of who is Al Muallim and who is Al Mudarris. Al Mudarris is just like in English you say teacher. But when you say Muallim, Muallim is Al Murabbi. Al Muallam is the teacher, is the one who teach you manner, teach you education, teach you how to uh, carry yourself. Uh, that's what we call our fathers are Muallam. We call the mother is the first Muallima. The first one who teach children are the, the mother because you start from the house, subhanAllah. So he is our Muallam till we, uh, you know, uh, no, no certain age you would say I graduated from the school of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is our teacher 
all the time. So uh, now in this sira, the book I'm using it to talk about the sira, uh, it has a special section about the continuous the continuous teaching or the continuity of the education and educational and scientific uh, construction of the ummah. And we did not call the era of Mecca, it's the ummah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was not their governor, he was not their, uh, he was their leader. The Muslim come, accept Islam, but they were in the oppressed time. Uh, they were prosecution time. So he never called Ummah to Rasul. We never called that era is a Ummah because when you call Ummah nation, you gotta have a government. You gotta have authority. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not have any authority in Mecca, right? He was prosecuted himself. And he's, you know, he, he, his follower who tells him, Asburu, uh, Asburu, have a patient, have a patient. Uh, we will be the victorious, but you gotta have a patient. But he didn't have that authority. So the Ummah established, from that time, he uh, migrated uh, and the companions to Al Muhajirin in Al Medina. And here we are in the second year, right? Now, in the second year, we said uh, the Qibla was directed from uh, Jerusalem to Mecca. Then the first barrel, we study about uh, the last week, Ghazwat uh, Badr. Then uh, the rules of the Islamic. Uh, uh, pillars start established. Salah was established in Mecca, but it's not as a form five daily prayers. They used to pray two rukah at night or morning after the sunrise, duha, and you're done. Uh, fasting was only uh, one day a year, maybe they will fast. Hajj, they never did Hajj in the 13 years of Islam. So all this now coming, establishing in the city of Medina when we had Ummah, nation. So let's look at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here as a teacher. How did he teach? Uh, did he ask the student to sit down as we do today on a chairs or on a desk or even if it's on the floor, bring with you a qurtasiyya, we call it in Arabic, books, notebook, pen, pencil. That's how you learn today, right? You sit down, you take notes. But if he was not even a writer or he did not hold a pen, how is he gonna ask his student bring a pen and read, right? Or write, subhanAllah. So let's let's read based on the seerah, how did he teach his ummah? And they became not only him our teacher, but all the sahabi and sahabiyat are our teachers through this hadith through transforming the Quran orally to us, subhanAllah. So it says, first of all, he established and he made clear that this religion will divide people into three sections. So the first section says, faith, whoever have Iman, is Al-Mu'min, Al-Iman, al or al muminun the one who has faith, right? And then Al-Kufr, the one who disbelieve in him, that's the state of Kufr. And the third one, we did not see this type of people in Mecca, but we saw them in Medina, what we call the hypocrisy or the hypocr uh, yeah, the hypocrites. So people are divided now in Medina in three different types. SubhanAllah, believers who has faith, disbeliever, disbelief, uh, dis uh, uh, disbelievers who they uh, are disbelief, right? And the third one, the hypocrisy. They start coming, accepting Islam, joining the circle of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but not from the heart, but they saw this speedy of spreading Islam and uh, so fast the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became the center of Medina. Uh, so many people joined the center, joined this leader, but they carried hate in their heart. They were jealous, but they couldn't announce that. We don't see that type of Mecca, in Mecca, why? People accepted in Mecca knowing they're gonna face consequence. The people of Quraysh will beat them up, <laughs> will jail them in their house if the mom, dad find out that the son is, you know, like uh, Mus'ab bin Umair was jailed in his house, chains in his legs. What would he say? I am a believer knowing he's gonna face that if his faith was not reside in his heart. By hypocrisy, no one. No one accepted Islam or followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa footsteps in Mecca unless they were truly ready even to take the abuse from the uh, Quraysh. So all people of Quraysh, all Muhajireen, they were 100% uh, faithful.
They were a believer, subhanAllah. Now we have that in Medina. So uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, which is Surah Madaniya, which is we know that the Surah, some of the Surah are Makiya, revealed in Mecca, some other Surah are Madaniya, revealed in Medina. So when you read the beginning of Surah uh, Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe how, what is taqwa, uh, how your uh, faith and your iman has to be in your heart, but you have to show it in your action. If not, there is uh, people who, Ladina uh, Kafaru, they uh, announce an animosity, uh, especially the people of book, uh, Al Yahud, who lived in city in Medina. So we're not looking at people of Damascus or people of uh, Bilad al Sham, where the Roman lived and the Arab around them, Tanassaru, uh, they became Christian. Uh, they were far from uh, Medina. Uh, Islam did not reach them yet. So when we talk about people of book, in the city of Medina, we know the Jew lived in Yathrib. So those people, they announced, they said, La Allah, we're not gonna follow him because he's not from Bani Israel. Uh, some of them start accepting Islam. We study Abdullah, one of them, uh, you know, how he accepted Islam and his own people loved him as, uh, you know, rabbi. But when they know he accepted Islam, they said, La Allah, we're not gonna follow you. Uh, you are a liar and this and that. But that's why Surah Al-Baqarah says clearly in very early ayat says, Ya ayyuhal nas a'budu rabbakum. Oh Allah, worship your Lord. Alladhi khalaqakum. He is the one who created you. Walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. So when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa will reside. The piety will come in your heart. So you take it from the heart, not from the action only. So, uh, so the, the act of worship now will help you to increase your level of taqwa, your level of iman. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously show also in this ayat, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً Who is your Lord? The one who elevated the heavens, uh, the skies, uh, without columns, and he made this circle, uh, sphere earth as a flat when you walk on it, and he sent you the rain, and he bring fruits from the ground, uh, don't worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dad mean uh, don't take something else to the level to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love them and uh, and uh, obey them as you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he made it while well, you know uh, those are in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then uh, he established Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how the ayat came now, now you have to pray, five daily prayer. Uh, not only daytime, you gotta get up some at night, do qiyam layl, do nawafir. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala say in Surah Al-Zumar, amman huwa qanitun ana al-layl, the one who get up at night and pray, which is considered also Salat Al-Maghrib, Salat Al-Isha, and Salat Al-Fajr as night prayer. Also, so uh, whoever he is, who established those and they do it, do they equal? الآخرة, and they're so worried about the resurrection day. Rabbi, then they just hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life. Do you think they're equal to the one who they don't know how to pray? They don't care that if they worship one God or not? Do you think those, the one who have that knowledge and practice their knowledge are equal the one who ignorant and avoid those knowledge and they don't pay attention to it? Allah says, Do you think, so here knowledge is becoming so important. If you, someone have a knowledge, someone don't have a knowledge, do you think they're equal by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the one who will obtain the knowledge and review that knowledge and practice the knowledge, those the one that have lub. Lub is aql, mind, heart. He says, subhanAllah, lub come from the, uh, if you have a fruit, when you reach the core of the fruit, that seed, we call it in Arabic, lub al-thamara. It's the lub. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use it for the human being. Do you have a lub? Al-Bab, do you have a heart? Do you have a brain to comprehend? You know, some of us have that organ, the brain perfectly working, the heart perfectly beating, but they don't comprehend anything because they don't want to pay attention to the rules come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those are not equal. So knowledge becomes, it's very important in Islam. Then it says, وَإِنَّ شَيْءِ الْوَحِيدِ الَّذِي أَمَرَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يَطْلُبْ مِنْهُ الزِّيَادَةً Allah only asks you to have more and more and more, never have enough. It's not the wealth, it's not the children. He said, al-ilm, knowledge. Then he says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Baqarah again, explained to us that, that how Allah taught all the knowledge on earth to Adam alayhi salam. ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ then he even asked the angels, do you have the knowledge like Adam alayhi salam? They said, oh Allah, we only know what you taught us. We're not able to learn like Adam now. Adam and his children, us, we have ability to learn. We have ability to increase our knowledge. Subhanallah. That's what made Adam alayhi salam to be honored and made uh, the angel to bow down to, honor, uh, to Adam because his ability of obtaining knowledge and keeping the knowledge he learned, subhanAllah. So let's now uh, describe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What kind of a teacher? I wish I learned this earlier so I will be the best teacher in my, you know, uh, professional as a teacher. <laughs> I'm retired now, but alhamdulillah, we always are students and we always are teachers also, inshallah ta'ala. So number one, uh, uh, so uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced this and the companions took notes of this best teacher. Says, he always did this, repeating and repeating the conversation. So if you say something, he will repeat it three times, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Why? Because he wants to make sure that people are listening carefully and learning. Again, I told you, no one sitting in his front taking notes, or, you know, let me just record, go home and repeat. I can learn now. No. How do they learn? By listening carefully. And if the Prophet ﷺ did not repeat himself three times, he was worried maybe they will misunderstand what he said or what he said was not clear maybe first time. So he will repeat it and he will say it slowly for three times. This is one of his best attributes to teach. So... Uh, one day Aisha radiallahu anha, she said this hadith, she said, I was in my house and then a sahabi sitting out door, but she can hear him. He's teaching something, he's saying something, but she said, uh, so uh, Aisha radiallahu anha said, قالت, uh, don't you like someone's way of teaching? She said, فَجَاءَ فَجَلَسَ so he came and he sat down, uh, you know, behind my door, so she can hear him. Uh, he is retelling a story he heard or a hadith he heard from the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, mm -hmm. so what she said now, uh, she's listening to him, but she said, وَكَانَ يُسْمِعْنِي ذَلِكْ So he made sure that Aisha can hear, but she said, Aisha, I'm listening but I was not free. Kuntu usabbih. I was praying nafila. It's a dawn. It's a duha. Uh, not dawn. Uh, that's fajr. Duha is like uh, after the sunrise. So she said, I was doing my nafila. Faqama qabla an aqbi subhati. Before I finish my two ruka'a duha, the man said what he's going to say. And he got up and he walked away. Then she said, ah, oh, I wish... I wish he was still there. I will tell him, that's not the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa will say his hadith. He will say it slowly. He will make sure people understood and heard. So what does that mean? She's teaching us how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to teach his students and his companions when they come and sit. So teachers should be slow down and repeat and make sure your students understand what you said. That's number one. Number two, at the end of the kalam, well, fossil bain al kalimat, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will second, the second is in his speech and the distinction between words. So we have an example as Aisha radiallahu anha, she uh, explained in this hadith, as Anas bin Malik said this hadith also, kana idha takallama bi kalimatin a'adaha thalatha. 
So Anas bin Malik, one of the narrator of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, if Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking to us, he will repeat it three times. So we make sure understood and learned. Those companions will memorize from hearing three times. Number three, al-i'tidal wa adam al-imlal wa ikhtiyar al-waqt. What does that mean? They will be uh, 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 He will take chance where the companion are listening. He's not will tell them, okay, class is on, pay attention to me. He will look at the companions. If they are willing to listen, he will understand from looking at them and he will take the advantage of their attentive and then he will tell them he, what he wants to teach them. So Ibn Mas'ud says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتخولنا أن يتخولنا مين يتعهدنا مين he will take advantage of our attentive. You know, if we're busy talking to each other or we're rushing to leave, he's not going to say, hey, come back, I have to teach you something. No. He will take advantage of our attentive. And then, even in the days, not every day is a suitable for them to be learned. Like we say now, weekend, days, maybe the weekend was Friday. Maybe Friday is, is besides the sermon, maybe Friday evening is the time where people are not going rushing to work. Maybe. Uh, all right, so subhanAllah, that's how he, he was. He would take the suitable time uh, by observing his student, the companions, and then he will use that moment, a moment of teaching. Number four says, Darb al he will set up examples. And that's a lot. There is specific books written about a hadith ma'al amthila, a hadith with examples, subhanAllah. So, uh, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked to us, he always, Allah says, Allah set up an example. Allah set up an example. Look at Surah Yasin. Uh, he set up the example of this uh, three messengers came, sent to a certain town. Uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. There is a man, two men, two brothers, and one of them had two garden. Right? So many amsila. Uh, uh, so many set up example in the Quran also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa will also use the same strategy when he is talking to us uh, then Surah Al-Hashr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Law anzalna hadha al-Quran ala jablin as, as if the example is Allah says if I send this Quran and descend on a mountain the mountain will shake and be destroyed and become like a dust because the, the load is so heavy of the Quran to be descended on the on the mountain. Imagine now on us and human. So we take the Quran lightly, but if, if we're serious, we have to take the Quran heavily and to understand it and to learn it. Many times we don't give that good attention. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give this example that this Quran is heavy because if Allah send it to the mountain, the mountain will be destroyed. So that should be a, a, a way for us to give us more thinking deeply about this Quran, how heavy this Quran can be. It can destroy a mountain, subhanAllah. Then it says, uh, which is raising issue. So the Prophet ﷺ will teach his, his companions by raising a, a issues and questions so the attention will be closer to Rasulullah ﷺ and they will learn through this questionnaire. And for example, uh, an Abi Huraira says, Allah adullukum says the Prophet, you will use Allah. Uh, how about I teach you through this? How about this? How about this? So he will use in Arabic the word Allah adullukum. So this hadith is so beautiful. The Prophet says, uh, should I show you what will erase your sin by doing small actions? The hadith says in Arabic, Allah adullukum ala ma yamhu Allahu bil khataya. I'm going to show you some action that if you do it, Allah will erase your sin as if you bring eraser. You wash your sin by doing this. Wow. Not only erase your sin, it will elevate you in heaven. Of course, you're going to say, okay, show me. What, what's that small action I can do to uh, wash my sin and to be elevated in heaven? Now, all of them are ready to hear this. What a way to bring the attention. 
قال the prophet talking إسباغ الوضوء على المكاره look we all make ablution we all take wudu but how good you do this wudu wudu making wudu is an act of ibadah sometimes we look at wudu just washing something because we're gonna pray no wudu itself is an act of ibadah just like salat itself is an act of ibadah subhanallah so إسباغ الوضوء على المكاره mean you wash when you wash, make sure that we do the water rich area we, where, for example, it's a cold and you're making we do outside with a cold water. You're going to hate the water rich here because ooh, it's going to give you shivering. But isbaq al wudu means make sure that we do reach in an area you don't like the water to reach. For example, washing your face completely, completely, right? Uh, make sure between the ear to ear, from the uh, where the hair start growing, all the way to the bottom of your chin. That's your face. Same when you wash your feet, uh, the back of the feet. It's a very area those bone by the feet, where it's joint your feet to the leg. Uh, uh, so important area. So that's what isbag al wudu al al makare. That's one. The, the other advice he gave: kithrut al khuta al masajid. You're taking many steps to the masjid. Me, come to the masjid for every salah. You know, unfortunately today in this land, maybe men goes once a week on Friday. SubhanAllah. Imagine now you have masjid all nearby you and you just increase of uh, taking footsteps to come to the masjid. The third thing is you finish from salat al-dhuhr now, you are waiting, waiting for Salat al-Asr to come. It's not like, oh my God, I'm done with Salat al-Dhuhr. It's so good. And then you forgot when Asr came. Then, oh my God, I'm rushing because my Asr is going. Oh my God, I did not know it's Asr. No, you're waiting for the time to come in. That waiting process, you have the reward as if you are doing Salat. Intizar al-Salat fi salat Fadalikum al ribab It says, if you do these things, Make sure your wudu is perfected. Make sure you come a lot to the masajid. Make sure you wait for your salah with patient. These are the things equal al-ribat. What is a ribat, ya Rasulullah? It says a ribat like doing jihad, like standing on the border to protect your land from the enemy. How much reward in that? We say, oh, we women, we don't do that. So we got no hasanat. No. Hey, you could do other things. You have the same reward. Allahu Akbar. That is really easy action. And your ajr is, فَذَلِكُمُ الْرِبَاطِ He repeated it three times. And this hadith from Sahih Muslim. Subhanallah. Then uh, he gave another uh, hadith also. I'm going to use the same. أَتَجْرُونَ He's asking a question to bring the attention. Also, this hadith is so important for us. It's learning of to listen, uh, it's, uh, it's time to learn the lesson from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith also from Abi Hurairah says, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal. The Prophet said, Atadruna Ata man al-muflis? Do you know who's bankrupt? Who is the bankrupt? Do you know who is the bankrupt? So it's a good question. You might just say, mm. and when he asks a question, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will pause as if he's expecting what, an answer from them. Uh, in this question, really, he paused, and then the companion says, Qalu, one of them said, Al Muflisu, the bankrupt, is Man fina man la dirham lahu wa la mata. The bankrupt is the one who has no property, no money, no wealth. You are ban bankrupt, right? Isn't it? That's in our definition also. I would say the same. فقال, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa answered, he said, إن المفلس, the bankrupt is, من أمتي, from my, now he can use the word أمتي in Medina. Now he has a nation, he has a group of people listening, he has authority to talk to them. إن المفلس من أمتي, from my nation, that reach us and continue the upcoming Muslim, the new Muslim who did not born yet. The bankrupt is, من يأتي يوم القيامة, Listen carefully. Who come on the day of judgment. Be salat. You have a lot of prayer. Siyam. You did fast. Zakat. You did all the pillars of Islam. Wayati. With these actions. 
شتم هذا you cursed so and so you call them bad name you curse them شتم mean you say uh, your father your mother whatever describe them in a very ugly way وقذف فاز هذا you accuse them by doing fornication or such sin you're not aware of وأكل مال هذا you took somebody's right could be a penny it could be a ten cent you took them while you know it's not yours you took it وسفك دم هذا Uh, if I can only kill so and so, you really didn't kill them, but you have the intention to kill them. That's also a sin. Or you kill somebody by innocent, just because you're angry at them. You smack someone, you hit someone. You hit, could be your own child, because Yom al Qisas says your children will hit you back if you hit them. Don't say, I hit them was right, I have right to hit them, I'm their parents. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a siwak. Siwak is, I have it right here. <laughs> the tooth, to clean the teeth with, from the tree, Arak tree. With this siwak, he told Zaid or Usama, the son of Zaid, I want to hit you with this, Ya Usama, to discipline you, but I'm worried about the day of Qisas, the day of the revenge. You're going to hit me back in judgment day. I won't even do that. And the Prophet, imagine us. Mom, God, forgive me, and may God forgive me if we did that. وَضَرَبَ هَذَا They hit somebody. فَيُعْطِي Then, with all these people, you took their right away from them. When you come, you come. You take from your good deeds, you give it to your daughter. Your good deeds, you give it to the stranger. Your in-laws, you curse them. <laughs> God forbid me. Uh, uh, somebody, your neighbor, uh, somebody different color, different language, different nation, you didn't like them. You have intention to kill them. Oh, I want the war to be just for me, right? That's the attitude you have. Then you take hasanat from you and you give it to them with all because you have hasanat because if you pray, you have hasanat by doing fasting, you have hasanat by doing zakat, sadaqat, charity, right? But now you're spending all your good deeds to those people. Now you finish all your good deeds. Now, but you, you still have people once they're right, away, take away from you. They come and you're not done with all these horrible things you did in this dunya. It says, قبل أن يقضي ما عليه أخذ من خطاياهم فطرحت عليه. Wow. Now they're going to take from their sin to put it on you so your sin scale become heavier because you ran off the good deed you have. Now they will take away from their sin to put it on you. فطرحت ثم طرح في النار. Then, of course, now all you have is bad deed and sayyat. Then they're going to throw you in hellfire. That's the bankrupt. So it's not the poor man on this earth. It's not the one, uh, you know, they lost their business and they have no more money. Uh, they have to sell their house. Uh, they have to migrate it because some, you know, issue, right? That's not the bankrupt. The real bankrupt that when you do good deed and somebody else now, you make them rich with hasanat because you gossiped, you took their right, you steal, you, you hurt somebody, everybody gonna come take the right away from you. And if you finish all your good deeds, they're gonna take from their bad deeds and put it on you. Ya Latif, that is a loser. That human being is a loser. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tub alayna. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, tub alayna. Then sometimes Rasulullah, that's the, he raised the question. So another way of teaching, he said, uh, he will call individual, one-to-one. -one. Uh, one hadith says, ayyuhal ghulam, or ya ghulam, or young man. But in this hadith, he says, ya abal mundir. So uh, uh, Ubay bin Ka'ab was walking with, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he called him, ya abal mundir. So he called him on his name. أتدري أي آية من كتاب الله معك أعظم؟ Do you know which آية? One verse. You have it. You memorize it. You memorize many يا أبا منذر. But one of them is the greatest in the eye of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Do you know which one? قلت الله ورسوله أعلم. So he answered and he said, Allah and his messengers know the best. I don't know. Then he asked him again. يا أبا منذر أي آية من كتاب الله معك أعظم؟ Same question. Which ayah, which verse of ayah, it's the greatest. You know it. You know it. Think. 
Then Abu Mundar says, Qultu, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Which ayah is that? Kursi. Yes. Ayat al-Kursi. That's a little bit long, but it's one verse. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Ayah number 255 from Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. So then he said, فَضَرَبَ فِي صَدْرِ So the Prophet put his hand on Aba uh, Ubay bin Ka'b's chest, and he told him, لِهَنِّئَكَ الْعَلَمُ Congratulations, you have a knowledge. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? You know, imagine now that Imam doing this lesson with his student and he do that to the young kids. Congratulations, you got, now, you know, congratulations, Debbie, he said, like this, subhanAllah, beautiful. So he will encourage the companions uh, in a way of uh, uh, trust your knowledge. Sometimes, you know, you answer, but you're hesitant. Am I right? Am I wrong? But we, we always, Teach when the students say, "Is it ayat al kursi?" I will say, "Are you, are you sure that's the answer, or are you just asking me?" Is it ayat? I hate that kind of <laughs> answering, <laughs> right? Is it this? No. Are you sure? Just say yeah. It could be right. It could be wrong, right? So trust your knowledge. So that's how Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He will teach them to be, uh, you know, brave. To be brave, shuja. Uh, another one it says إلقاء المعاني الغريبة المثيرة للاهتمام والداعية إلى الاستفسار والسؤال in English it says uh, throwing strange strange uh, interesting meaning that call for inquiry and question so he will throw strange and interesting meaning uh, meanings uh, means that will Bring your attention and question yourself. Inquiry, bring inquiry and question to yourself. So let's see one example of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam based on this. It says, uh, uh, "I'm going to see the hadith." And the Rasulullah who is saying, "Rawahu Jabir bin Abdullah." Uh, Jabir bin Abdullah say, uh, "Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." The Prophet was uh, passing the market. He's in the market. Uh, then while he's com uh, coming through the people, um, there is people on the both th side of him, right side and left side, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam walking. So Then he saw in the market a dead goat, and not only uh, this goat, uh, this goat is dead, a sack. A sack means uh, the ears are cut. So this is a very bad habit when the Arab, Arab, even before Islam, if they cut the ears of the animal, goat or uh, lamb, means there is something wrong in this uh, animal, livestock. So this livestock, this goat is dead, and on top of that, uh, the ears were cut. So... Then he touched the ears, the Prophet ﷺ. Now he's teaching in the market and he says, Who will love to buy this goat with this ears like this? Just one dirham. One dirham is, uh, one dinar is like one dollar. Uh, dinar was the gold coin and dirham is like a hundred dirham make one. Yani it's a penny. Who would buy this with penny? فقالوا, oh, all the men around them, they said, oh, who would want, who would buy that? First of all, it's dead. What would we do with that? You cannot eat dead animal. Secondly, uh, a sack. I mean, the ears were cut. Something wrong indeed with this. Uh, then he insists, he said, would you like to have it? Would anyone will love to have it? قالوا والله لو كان حيا كان عيبا فيه والله even if this goat was alive there's something wrong with this goat nobody wants to buy it nobody wants to have it لأنه أسك because uh, you know uh, the, the defeated shows from the ears were cut were cut فكيف وهو ميت he's dead on the top of that now he's dead فقال the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so he showed that how ugly and how is unwanted this dead animal? Even if it was life, it's unwanted. 
So the Prophet swear, فَقَالَ فَوَاللَّهِ He swear in Allah, لَا الْدُنْيَا أَهْوَنُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ هَذَا عَلَيْكُمْ وَاللَّهِ The whole world put together in the eyes of Allah, it's so belittled more than this dead animal belittled by you. And we are running after this dunya, collecting wealth, clothes, food, dish, wash, <laughs> dishes, uh, furniture, and on and on and on. In the eyes of Allah, this is so small, it has no value. May Allah forgive us. SubhanAllah, Bani Adam, you know, Allah made us, we have to live, does not mean get rid of everything you have and just live on the street, but don't become attached to this dunya. This dunya is so small in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This dunya is just you passing through, right? As if you sat under the tree, under the shade, take a rest, then continue your journey. So this dunya is our rest. We're going to continue this journey. The biggest journey is the resurrection day, when, where there is no more death ahead of us. But in this dunya, we're going to die. We're going to die. So that's one way, right, uh, of his way he, he will teach. Uh, that's why the, the hadith are so ingrained, engraved in their brain, the companions, when they tell us word by word, they learned from Rasulullah sallallahu uh, alayhi wa One another way says, استخدام الوسائل التوضيحية, which is as if a teacher in the classroom, unless you use uh, tools, uh, you know, to explain, for example, if I want to keep telling the student, use a ruler, uh, they have to know what is ruler. I have to hold it, I have to explain to them, I have to say uh, the numbers in centimeter or in inch, then the student will know, yeah, this is a tool I'm using it. So he will illustrative meaning. He will use illustrative meaning. That's what wasail tawdihiya is. Let's see uh, one of his ways. Uh, what kind of illustrative uh, means he will use? Says Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. First of all, at tabir bi harakat al yad. He will use always his hand as a gesture expression. You know, subhanallah. Naturally, when I talk, I always do this. So that was also, some people, they talk their hand, you know, by their side or folding, subhanAllah. But the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he always used his hand. It says, uh, and Abi Musa al-Ash'ari, one of the companions, narrated this hadith, and the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قال, المؤمن للمؤمن, the Prophet talking, he says, a believer to the believer, a, a, a person who has faith, with the other person who has faith, المؤمن للمؤمن, كالبنيان المرسوس, يشد بعضه بعضا. And Abi, Abi uh, Musa al-Ash'ari says, well, when you read the word, you know that, we don't know if he really did this. But the companion said, وَشَبَكَ بَيْنَ أَصَابِعِهِ It became part of the hadith. The Prophet says, a believer with a believer are like a one building, like a blocks of building, يَشُدُّ بَعْضَهُ بَعْضًا Supporting each other. But he said, I saw the Prophet doing this with his hand. So the believers with the believers, like this. يَشُدُّ بَعْضَهُ بَعْضًا SubhanAllah. At-Tabir bin sometimes he will use Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam throw drawing. He will draw. You know, if you have a board, you will draw, right? You, you, if I tell you triangle, you're not going to know what is triangle till I draw for you, say this is triangle. <laughs> so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used drawing. So let's see one of the hadith. And Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, khatta Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khattan bi yadeh. The Prophet was among us, so he bowed down, and then he, with his hand, on the sand, he made straight line with his finger. Khatta bi yadeh, khattan, maybe like this, maybe with a finger, yadeh. He made the line like this, straight line. Says, هذا سبيل الله مستقيمة. This is a path to Allah. This is a road to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's straight path. Then, he said, ثم خطة خطوطا عن اليمين. He made lines on the right. He made lines on the left. ثم قال, وهذه سبل وهذه سبل ليس منها سبيل إلا عليه شيطان. يدعو إليه. These are exits 
all this exits by the end there is a devil sitting on the exit calling you says come on there is a party here come on we're drinking here come on we have fun here <laughs> Make sure you are on that surah al-mustaqim. So he draw to the companion to make it so close, his attention, to understand what is surah al-mustaqim, what is this exits or roads going this way and that way, subhanAllah. And in each path, there is a devil calling you, Allah Akbar. Then he also, to maqara'ah, then Rasulullah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he read a verse from the Quran, Surah Al-An'am 153, he said, Allah says, this is my straight path. Follow the straight path. There is many other paths. Don't follow them. Then you're going to take those paths, those exits, then you're going to be astray from each other. You're going to be divided. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made sure he advised you to stay on the Sirat al-Mustaqim. So you can achieve the level of taqwa, inshallah. And another time, he will, uh, type of uh, illustrative says, التعبير برفع وإظهار الشيء. He might have to raise something and he will show up. So let's see with this hadith. Uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib say, رضي الله عنه قال إن نبي الله Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم أخذ حريرا فجعله في يمينه He took piece of silk material fabric made of silk then in his right hand then he took gold on his left hand now he's showing the silk and the gold in his both hands فجعله في شماله ثم قال then he said إن هذين حرام على ذكور أمتي these two materials are forbidden for the Muslim male from my أمه then in another النساء عن أبي موسى different حديث عن أبي موسى أحل الذهب والحرير لإناث أمتي silk gold made for the female of the believers. It's forbidden for men to wear it. So he did it. He elevated the item, the material, to show it physically what he was talking about. SubhanAllah. Uh, about wearing the silk, one of the companion was allowed to wear silk because he had a sensitive skin and he had always rash on his skin. Allahu A'lam, today we call it eczema. So if you wear something made of wool or made of different material, he will be irritated, he will become sick. So he had a permission from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to wear silk. So there is a time, just like if you are, you know, have no food to eat, but pork, it says eat from the pork, right? To, to fulfill your hunger if you're reaching a, a, a moment that you cannot help and but pork is available, subhanAllah. So uh, that's, there is exception sometimes, it's based on the, on, on the nature of the men uh, health. But there is manufacturer silk that's not considered pure silk also. Many times, you know, you could have a shirt for your husband or you see it, I may maybe blended with silk, but it's not the pure silk. Pure silk are different. Wallahu alam. Then it says, التعليم العملي بفعل الشيء. Then he will teach by a practical education. So, uh, you know, in, at a weekend school, many times we will take the students where? To the area of making ablution, wudu, and we'll tell them, look, follow me, watch me, I'm making the wudu, and you do like me. So uh, what we have from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually we watched and we listen, we, we, we learn. Most important action in Islam, which is Salat. Look how Salat was established. Uh, كما فعل عندما صعد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المنبر فصلى بحيث يراه الناس أجمعون. He climbed the member. Member is like now. Let's say someone go three steps and you're on the theater. Uh, so people who's gonna show something, you know, you go to showcase. They're in above the level where everybody's sitting because 
Maybe somebody shorter than me sitting behind. They can't see, right? So they made the member. Actually, the idea of the member came from a woman, a Sahabiya. She said, Ya Rasulullah, if you just elevate yourself a few steps, and then you stand there, we can see you because we can see you when you talk or when you do something. And the idea of the member was established back then. So the Prophet climbed the member, and then he stood facing al qibla and he did salah, but look what he did. فَاسْتَقْبَلِ الْقِبْلَ وَكَبَّرْ He raised his hand, people watching him from his back, how he did his takbira, where he put his hand. Then he, they looked at him where he put his hand. وَقَامَ النَّاسِ خَلْفَهُ People stood and they did, watching Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, copying him how they do it. فَقَرَأَ He read, وَرَكَعَ Then he did ruku'a. They وَرَكَعَ النَّاسُ خَلْفَهُ People bowed down. They did rukua right behind him. ثم رفع رأسه. He stood after the rukua. You have the qiyam. ثم رجع القهقري. He walked down on the steps to do sujood on the ground. Habibi ya Rasulullah. So the minbar did not allow him to do the sujood there. He, it said, without turning his face to the people. So he's doing actual salah. So if you are doing salah, you can, if you have, to move up front or back, do not bring your face away from the qibla. Like let's say you're looking after your child crying. Once you turn your face or your body away from the qibla, you broke your salah. Right now here, Rasulullah sallallahu says, Raja al qahqari means he stepped back. فَسَجَدَ عَلَىٰ أرض. He prostrated, he put his forehead on the ground. ثُمَّ عَادَ إِلَى المنبر. People did like him. Then he climbed, he went back to the member. He read, he did rukur like this for two rukah. And he did the sujood the same way. فَقَالَ When he finished, he said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O people, إِنَّمَا صَنِعَتُ هَذَا لِتَأْتَمُّ بِي I showed you this exactly so you can pray like me. So the hadith says, صَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتُمُونِي أُصَلِّي Pray the way you saw me praying. And based on this, the maja, the jamhur, the jama'ah says, you have to pray men and women the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa pray. So there is no difference between men, how they pray, women, how they pray. Some madahib, they make a little slight distinguishing, distinguish between the women and the men. But the majority, they say, no, we all have to pray the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa based on this hadith. وَلِتَعْلَمُوا صَلَاتِي This way you know how to salah. So establishing the, and the Prophet himself, when he came to uh, Isra'u al-Mi'raj, remember, we went through that. When he came around, you know, al-Isra, during the Isra, Jibril stopped in the desert. He made wudu, the Prophet watched him, then the Prophet made wudu. Then Jibril alayhi salam did salah, and the Prophet watched him, then Rasulullah sallallahu learned how to do salah directly from Jibreel. So we are directly learning from Jibreel alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. Then he said, استعمال العبارات اللطيفة والرقيقة He will use kind and gentle words when he talked to the people. He was not, uh, he will never shout, he will never select bad words to talk to people. So he says, uh, method, uh, uh, this is the hadith, he will teach them the adab, uh, the etiquette, uh, to be a listener or to be a teacher. It says, he will choose, he will select his beautiful words. And he says, uh, uh, one hadith I'm gonna say. Uh, it says, uh, uh, when he teach the people who they sit to ask for whatever they want, he will show them exactly how you request what you want in a manner way. Just like the son asking the father for something, you have to ask in polite way, right? So he says, فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْوَالِدِ I am to you like the father. I think this are many talk like this about Isa alayhi salam when he was teaching. He will tell them the father, I am the father. So here you go. 
in Arabic, father is al-walid. Here you go, that I am in the level of your father when I am teaching you. فَإِذَا أَتَى أَحَدُكُمُ الْغَلَائِطِ الْغَائِظِ فَلَا يَسْتَقْبِلِ الْقِبْلَةِ So he's teaching one of this good manner in this hadith. He says, when one of you are going to the bathroom and doing their business in the bathroom, do not face your qibla. Hopefully, our bathroom are not directed to the qibla in your area. Check it and see. Subhanallah. Yani if this house was built by a Muslim, how mindful you will be choosing your bedroom, the direction, right? Your bathroom, the direction should not be facing the qibla. So when you're you, you, you <laughs> using the bathroom, right? Do not face the qibla and do your business like this. La ilaha illallah. That's a manner. Wala yastadbirha wala. Not only your face, your back also. Don't turn your back to the qibla when you do that. So you have to take the other direction. And when you clean yourself, it says, do not use your right hand to purify, clean your private. Don't use the right hand. And after this hadith, heard by Uthman, it says, Uthman radiallahu anhu never used his right hand to touch his private ever in his life till he died. Allahu Akbar. Adaban. And we know that Haya Uthman was described that the angel feel modest in the front of uh, Uthman uh, with his modest. Habibi ya Rasulullah. Then uh, and another one says Tashji'a al-Muhsin wa thana alayhi he will say, he will encourage uh, uh, um, and uh, praise the benef 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 benefactors. Uh, he will encourage and praise the people who do good things. He will not just ignore them. He will recognize them. Says, فعن أبي موسى أبي موسى الأشعري by the way when he recites Quran he has a beautiful voice. It says رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم one day he told him لو رأيتني وأنا أسمع لقراءتك البارحة لقد أوتيت مزمار من مزامير أبي داود. So he said يا أبي موسى if you only saw me watch watching and listening. to you when you were reciting Quran. You did not know I was there. I was listening to you, Ya Abi Musa. But he's praising him. He said, what a beautiful voice you have. You have one of the part of the voice of Dawood, knowing that Dawood has a most beautiful voice on his earth. He said, لَقَدْ أُتِيْتَ مِزْمَارًا مِنْ مَزَامِيرِ أَلِي Dawood. And Abi Musa al-Ashari said back then, part of the hadith, he said, oh, Ya Rasulullah, only if I know that you are listening, I will even make my voice more beautiful than what I was doing back then. So if you see something, if you hear something right, good, praise her, recognize her, right? That's a way of teaching, just like talking to your kids, subhanAllah, these are companions. So sometimes, you know, sister to sister, family to family, we really ignore stuff like that. You know, only if you tell somebody, wow, what a beautiful, oh my God, I love the, the way you do it. We think like, uh, yeah, we're too, we're grown up people. We don't do that to each other. But imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would do it to his companion. Abi Musa al-Ash'ari is not a kid, he's a man, subhanAllah. Then he will use also ishfaq al mukhtai He will have compassionate toward the wrongdoers, and not, not to debunking them. So if somebody make mistakes, you just don't you know, shout on them. Let's see how we use. Let's see if there's hadith here. Uh, it says, عن معاوية رضي الله عن الحكم السلمي He had uh, hadith. He's, he said رضي الله عن وقال بينما أنا أصلي مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I was praying with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If the one of the people sneezed while we were praying. فقلتو. So <laughs> uh, Muawiyah bin Hakam he talked during the salah and he told him, uh, "Irhamukallah," right? 
<laughs> when somebody sneezes, he tells them, God bless you. In Arabic, Yerhamukallah. فَلَمَانِ الْقَوْمِ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ Everybody was like looking at him during the Salah. I was like, how dare you talk during the Salah? He felt like the eyes on him. Uh, then, uh, He keep talking during the Salah. What's wrong with you guys? Why do you keep looking at me? What wrong I did? What did I do wrong? They're doing this. It's like, like a sign. It's like doing this. <laughs> he understood that they're telling him, shut up. You cannot talk during the salah. Finally, he shut. He shut up his mouth. The Prophet finished praying and everybody finished praying. Now he's talking about the Prophet, how lovely he was to him, how kind he was to him. How he thought he's going to get smacked from Rasulullah by all the mistakes he made. I never seen a teacher like him before or after. So Allah, he swear. This uh, Sahabi, Muawiyah, he said, For Allah, ma kaharani. He did not broke my heart. Wala darabani. He did not hit me. Wala shamatani. He didn't even told me, What are you stupid? You're talking during the salah. He didn't even say that. But the Prophet said, Inna hadi salah la yasluh fiha shay'un min kalam al nas. During the salah, nothing is accepted as a conversation between people as you do it outside the salah. إِنَّمَا هُوَ Salat is tasbih, takbir, qiraat Qur'an. Simple. During your salah, we all learn. You just read Qur'an, you do tasbih, subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't talk, you don't answer the phone while you salli. You don't text while you do salli. <laughs> Today we have technology, right? <laughs> I want to tell you what I saw. One of the taraweeh. A woman next to me, we're doing taraweeh. The phone is next to her feet. I am next to her. And the phone ring during the taraweeh. For God's sake, turn the phone off and put it on your bag if you cannot control it. Wallahi, with her toe, she clip. It's a WhatsApp call. She pushed the button and she was telling him with her head, is like, watch me, I'm during the salah. Then she closed up. What I'm going to tell this older woman when we finish the salah, I didn't say anything. I could not say anything. Like, how could you do that during the salah? Yani you didn't talk, but you're standing, the phone next to you on the ground, and she answered with her toe, and the picture, I, I'm next to her, I see her. Yani, subhanAllah, she disturbed me, I see her. Then she will shake her hand, I see her picture on the camera there. Then she hung up. Telling that caller, I'm during the salah, Habibi. Don't call me now. Subhanaka Rabbi Allah. Subhanallah. Yani, I, don't you hate when phone ringing? You remember the early time of cell phone? It's a massage. Like if you have a phone, it's like, oh, everybody has to know I have cell phone. It's on. It's ringing. <laughs> Or, I don't know, music, you know, their tone, tone ring is a music you're disturbed during the salah. May Allah forgive us, you know. Or during the khutbah to Jum'ah, people, you know, I told the other day this lady next to me also, during the khutbah, she's answering, serving like this, like this, doing with the phone. She's next to me. Then she put it back. Then I guess she's bored. Get up again. Then when we finish, I said, Habibti. During the khutbah to Jum'ah, you cannot touch, you cannot even touch the rug doing this. It says, if you put your finger on the sand, because they pray, pray without rug in the Masjid of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the city of Medina, they didn't have rug, they didn't have mats. They prayed right on the top of the sand. It says, if you, during the Imam, the, uh, doing the khutbah, if you play with the sand like this, with your finger, فَقَدْ لغوت. You broke your salah. A sister was next to me doing that. I'm giving you this example because it's a common mistake. During Salat Tarawih, it was, you know, Salat Tarawih is longer, I guess. During the Salah, she was uh, uh, coughing, right? 
She up, picked up the bottle of water, opened it, drank the water, closed it, and finished the salah. Well, this time I had the option to turn on habit tea. During the salah, we don't drink, we don't eat, we don't chew gum. <laughs> we, we cannot have candy in our mouth. She said, I was choking. I said, okay, break your salah and drink. And come back and join the salah. Say, salamu alaikum, salamu alaikum, take the water, drink. Then you start all over. Whatever you missed, you got to make it up. You cannot drink during the salah. Subhanallah, when we are during the salah as if you're fasting, fasting from food, drink, and talk, you cannot make, uh, uh, hello, I'm doing salah, hey, I'm in the second ruqa now. You cannot do that. Subhanallah. So, but the Prophet, you got to be sensitive, you know. Some, some, they don't have that sensitivity, but the Prophet, he taught in a very beautiful manner that you cannot even tell somebody, uh, that's why it says when you enter Salatul Khutbah, Salatul Jum'ah, and the Imam on the member doing Khutbah, you're not allowed to say Salamu Alaikum. Because when you say Salamu Alaikum now, so many ignorant people, they're going to say, Wa Alaikum Salam. And some of them even give you hugs and kisses. You broke your Khutbah, you broke their, uh, uh, so, sorry, you broke their Salah and you broke your intention by entering Khutbah al Jum'ah. SubhanAllah. Then it says, Adam al Tasrih wal Iktifa bit Ta'rid fima Yazum says, failure to make statement and merely exposing what is uh, reprehensible. So if you see something wrong, don't just say it, address it in an ugly manner. Uh, so uh, let's see if there is hadith here. So to learn from it. Murahat shu'ur al you have to be sensitive toward the one who's making the mistakes. And when you address that mistakes, don't address it personally to that person. You could say, get up. You know, many times it just happened to me that when I saw this texting, I said, many times when the Imam finished the khutbah, I will get up, I say, Salaam alaikum, sisters. I just want to remind myself, remind you, put your phone away, please. You're not allowed to answer or serve you know, on the social media while the Imam doing khutbah. If you have intention to do Salat al-Jum'ah here, uh, stick to that rules. Otherwise, you will Salat al-Jum'ah invalid. Invalid. I don't have to say necessarily you and you, right? So a few times I did that, Allahu alam. I'm not the best, but, you know, we, we, we would worry because that sister has to learn a lesson, inshallah ta'ala. It says, فعن أبي حامد الس عن أبي عن أبي حميد الساعدي رضي الله عنه الصحابي قال استعمل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رجلا على صدقات بني سليم. One of the man he used him to go and collect charity from Bani Salim. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم by the end of the year also he will hire people to collect the cat. That's how it used to be done. يدعى ابن لتيبة that's the name of the person فلما جاء حاسبه فقال هذا مالكم وهذا هدية so when the worker man who supposed to collect the gift the, the charities the, which is the cat, the cat and man uh, he came, he said this is your money this is what I collected from that tribe and that tribe gave me a gift for me so this is my gift فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said فَهَلَّا جَلَسْتَ فِي بَيْتِكَ فِي بَيْتِ أَبِيكَ وَأُمَّكَ حَتَّى تَأْتِيكَ هَدِيَتَكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ صَادِقًا If you think this was a gift they gave it to you, you should reject that gift when you go back to your home. That gift should come directly to your house, not when you were collecting the zakat. So in that case, if you approach a person behind the desk doing their job, you don't bribe them, you don't give them, hey, this $5 is for you. Can you do this paperwork for me? Certainly they will get up and they do the paperwork, they rush you. That gift is not good gift. If I wanna reward that human being who did my paperwork, I will deliver the gift myself somehow to their house, fine, but not at when they work. That's adab and manner and etiquette. And this way, none of us, we do our job, what's assigned, we're not doing it for the bribery or for extra gift or for extra money you made while you are supposed to do your job in a best way.
سبحان الله then with all this kindness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is time he became angry so let's see الغضب والتعنيف متى ما كان ذلك دوافع مهمة if there is something to cause him something to be angry he will when anger and violence whenever this is the important reason important issue something to do with legal era legal something made a big mistake a big sin he will his face will become red, red and he will become very angry and i'm going to say this and i'm going to let you go i think i passed over the hour may allah forgive me this story says عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه this companion أن عمر بن الخطاب himself عمر entered the masjid أتى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and he brought something in his hand to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what was in his hand نسخة من التوراة copies from the Torah فقال عمر talking to the prophet يا رسول الله عمر is happy يا رسول الله هذه نسخة من التوراة this is a copy pieces from the Torah the prophet was silence he didn't say anything he didn't say show me فسكت the prophet silence فجعل يقرأ ووجه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يتغير عمر knows how to read he was reading what's on the paper reading but the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is a quiet but now his face is changing فقال أبو بكر أبو بكر is listening and watching ثكلتك الثواكل means I mean your mom I wish your mom did not give the birth to you something like that ما ترى بوجه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم don't you see the face of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم changing فنظر عمر عمر was reading فنظر he looked at the prophet's face فقال أعوذ بالله من غضب الله he saw anger face on his on the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's face then he seek refuge from the anger of Allah and his messenger عمر was in trouble if Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم angry at you and that fall on you oh my god that's you're destroyed he said I seek refuge أعوذ بالله من غضب الله وغضب رسول الله then he said رضينا بالله رب I accept Allah is my lord وبالإسلام إسلام is deen Islam is my deen. Wabi Muhammad is my prophet. I don't want anything beyond that. I don't want Musa. I don't want Tawrat. I don't want anything. Allah and his messengers and his book and his Quran are mine and that's it. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Now the prophet talking. والذي نفس محمد بيده Mean he swear in Allah, the one who carries the soul of Muhammad. In his hand, that's Allah. لو بدا لكم موسى if you saw Musa, if you saw Musa alayhi salam walking right now, and you follow Musa and you leave me, you will be astray, even though Musa is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Musa was alive right now, and he is in my time, I am the messenger now, and Musa alayhi salam is back, he is here, وأدرك نبوتي لاتبعني he will follow me الله أكبر this is the final messenger of Allah سبحانه وتعالى this is the final message we are required to go and read with the purpose of learning the religion of Musa or the religion of Isa or whatever we believe in that book we believe in the Anjil, we believe in the Torah, but we're not required to read it. True or false, whatever exists, if you're reading for a different purpose, that's different. People read it for debate, for whatever other purpose. Otherwise, you don't say, wow, I found it in the book of the Torah, just like what Allah and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu say. We don't have to do that. The Prophet was angry. After that, we learn how to say Radina Billahi Rabba, I accept Allah is my Lord. Wabil Islami Dina, you have to say it three times a day to make sure that you are on the, on the true religion. Raditu Billahi Rabba, Wabil Islami Dina, Wabi Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Abiyya wa Rasula. And sometimes we add, Wal Quran Kitabi. I accept Allah is my Lord, Muhammad is my messenger. 
Quran is my book and Islam is my deen. If you say that three times and you die that day, you enter paradise. If you say that time, three times at night and you die in your sleeping, you will enter paradise. Hadith Sahih. Uh, I'm going to stop here because I was going to address a little bit two more. Then I was going to address, okay, if we have a, such a teacher among us, which is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what kind of students the Sahaba were? We'll talk about that next Friday, inshallah ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum. If I made any mistake, it's my mistake. Anything was right from Allah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. I hope I, I was a, a, a good teacher while, while I was doing this. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and teach me how to be a best teacher, inshallah ta'ala. Our, our model is Muhammad al-Mu'allim. Sallallahu alayka ya habibi ya Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum.